Sometimes, something as simple as opening a door can be tricky. In this instance, an automatic door might come in handy. Automatic sliding doors are probably the most efficient way to enter or exit a building, but they don't work in all situations. You wouldn't want one of these on the front of your house. Swinging doors, the type that we're used to, are much more practical. The problem with these is that they can be difficult to operate, especially if you're not familiar with them. For instance, if you came across one of these, how would you go about trying to open it? The truth is, not all doors are the same, but some are definitely easy to figure out. So what makes some doors so much better than others, and why are some so difficult to open? On this particular door, the door to my bedroom, the doorknob looks the same on both sides. So how do I know whether to push or to pull? As a general rule, household doors open into the room they lead to, but this isn't always reliable. Sometimes it's just as impractical to have a door open inwards, but how can you tell? A round doorknob can be an indication to push or to pull. Generally, we expect to push outwards, but if you find yourself pushing on door handles meant to be pulled and vice versa, the problem might not be you. It might be the door. While most households utilize the ambiguous round doorknob, it's easy to get used to which way the door opens when you walk through it every day. Other ways of opening include push bars, push plates, panic bars, and turnable handles. Some doors slide open without giving any specific sign that they do so. This can be especially frustrating. Some public doors have signs that tell you whether to push, pull, or slide. But should a device as simple as a door be this complicated to operate? I mean, you don't need a sign to tell you which way to push your toilet handle. So what is a door? Modern doors are made of three basic parts. The hinge, the door itself, and the latch. The latch is always opposite the hinge, and that's a side that must be pushed or pulled in order for any movement to happen. Now there is a method to crack the code most of the time. If you can see the round part of the door hinge here, then the door opens toward you. If no round part is present, then you're probably supposed to push. Some designers, however, strive for attractiveness over practicality. In these instances, it's not always obvious which way is correct. Some of them can actually be misleading. Some doors deceive the operator by seeming to tell them to push or pull when the opposite action is actually correct. Don Norman took notice of this in his book, The Design of Everyday Things. In fact, his analysis led to the nickname Norman Doors. These are doors which look like they're meant to be opened one way, but are actually opened by another. Norman explains his concept by using what he calls signifiers, essentially parts that give hints as to how the door should be opened. For instance, horizontal graspable handles can signify that the user is supposed to pull. But unfortunately, these can't always be relied on. Affordances is a term used to describe what actions are possible. Here, sliding is an affordance while pushing or pulling is not. Signifiers are meant to clearly show the affordances of an object. Here, the only signifier is the handle, but it's not a very good one. A second look can reveal the bearings along which the door can slide, but most people don't have time to stop and analyze every door they come across. But what's the big deal? So what if every once in a while I have to think twice about how a door opens? Aren't there better things to be worrying about? For the most part, yes. But in some cases, faulty door design can be deadly. In 1903, more than 600 people died when a curtain caught fire in the Iroquois Theater in Chicago. The exit doors were poorly marked and difficult to open. When people are in a panic, they tend to push the door outwards. And when it doesn't work, instead of trying to pull it open, they just push harder. Now building regulations require a certain number of outward opening doors in case of emergency. In 1891, Robert Alexander Briggs invented the panic bar in response to a similar disaster which killed nearly 200 school children. The panic bar is useful because it clearly signifies that a pushing is required. It also leaves no doubt as to which side of the door should be pushed. At this point, it's clear that some door handles are better than others. 
but which ones are the worst? Plain push bars clearly show the door is meant to be pushed, but don't specify on which side the latch is located. When compared to its alternatives, these bars are not extremely useful. Horizontal handles, which don't tell whether to push or to pull, should also be expunged, along with oddly shaped bars and handles, which can leave the user clueless. So that leaves us with vertical handles for doors that are meant to be pulled. These are nice because your hand fits neatly into them, and it feels more natural to pull than to push. But for doors that are meant to be pushed, we're left with panic bars and push plates. Both are clear signifiers and work just as well. If one universal design had to be settled on, the push plate seems more practical, as it's cheaper and takes up less space. So if door manufacturers could just agree on a few universal rules, a lot of effort and embarrassment could potentially be saved. All handles should be vertical, clearly signifying a pull. If a door doesn't have a handle, then your only option is to push. But now that you know how to get there, where exactly are you going?